So here's how to sell digital products on system.io. I think you're really going to love this tutorial. And if you'd like to follow along, you can click the link in the description to do so. System does come with the ability to use them for free and everything I'm gonna be showing you, you can follow along with me. And of course, you can always upgrade if needed. And with that in mind, let's get started right away. I know you're gonna love this one. All right, so we're gonna have a few steps here and what I'm gonna do is break it down to you step-by-step step, as well as leave chapters down below in case you need to go back to specific aspects of it. First and foremost, when you're inside your system dashboard, what you wanna do is hover on over websites and click on sales funnels. This is where I am right now. So let's click on create. All right, so here you wanna give it a name. Since you're selling digital products, I'm just gonna do an example one that I made up off the top of my head. It's gonna be an ebook called The Marketing Island Method. You wanna click on sell because we're gonna be selling a product or a service. Obviously use your currency. I'm in the US, so that's what I use and simply click on save. Now here is something that you wanna make sure you don't forget. I completely forgot about it myself, that's why I say it. What you wanna do once it has been created, go to the three dots right here, click on this and go to settings. This is very important. So this is going to be where you wanna check off your accepted payment method. So for me example, I'm just gonna do credit card and PayPal. Now if you don't have the abilities to check these off, you simply have to go into your settings and quickly enable them. Allow me to show you how that's done. All right, so to get to where we are right here, you wanna hover over your logo and just go to settings or your profile picture, whatever it is, click on settings, and then simply go to payway, um, payway, payway. I combine both words, payment gateways, okay? And as you're gonna see, normally there's gonna be a connect button right here. I have them connected, which is why it's not showing it. Now, Stripe is extremely easy. You're just going in and entering your information and it connects. For PayPal, you might need a little bit more, but they do have documentation on that. If you do need help, let me know and I'll give you the link to the article. Overall, it should probably only take you a few minutes. Upon doing so, if you have them connected, go back to that same sales funnel. And what you can do in case there aren't the ability to check them off, to simply go here, reload it, Okay, and then you can go back here, go to settings. Okay, and I'm just gonna do uh, no Apple Pay for this. And I'm just gonna do Stripe and PayPal. So let's click on save. And we got that, we're good. Now we wanna click on our actual sales funnel that we just created right here. All right, so if you wanted to make this as easy as possible, ideally you only need two pages here, an order form and a thank you page, okay? But if you wanted to add a sales letter or a sales page, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So I'm gonna click on add step. I'm just gonna call this sales page. And under the type, you wanna find that exactly. So you want a sales page as well. These are gonna give you the sales page templates. Okay, and there's gonna be plenty of them that you can use. I like clicking on 30 and just kind of sorting through and seeing which one I like. Now it's really up to you based upon maybe your brand, what you want the layout to be. And something else I do wanna let you know that when I'm doing this tutorial, I'm not gonna be going about like a lot of the aesthetics. I just wanna make sure that you have it all set up because once you have the pieces together, you can go back and obviously make edits to it, You know, change around the fonts, make a better headline and so on and so forth. I'm just looking for one that's pretty simple and straightforward that we could sell or at least use when selling a uh, ebook. So let's do one more page. There's quite a lot of them, which is a good thing. Uh, and this one looks great right here. So I'm going to click on this to preview how to build a passionate online following for your art based business. So everything you need to know, this could be great for an ebook. If this is going to be a video, there's a buy now button, what you'll be, uh, what I'll be teaching, what you'll be learning. Okay, what's in the course? Okay, you could obviously remove those, you know, if you don't want either of those. In fact, there's probably some more that you could use that maybe are a little straightforward. This one looks very similar as well. Perfect, we have a headline there. There'd be a video under it. We have a buy now button. And I think this one actually looks fantastic. A price right here, not a lot going on with it, which means it's gonna be much easier for you to edit if you wanna use a sales page, okay? So I'm gonna use that one. I'm gonna click on select. And most importantly here, what you wanna do is make sure you drag it up to the top so it's the first step in your sales funnel. So ideally when someone goes to the top of your funnel, they're gonna to go to the sales page. If they click on buy now, they're gonna to go to the order form. And then when they purchase, they're gonna to go to the thank you form and get an email. I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. So there is one thing on the sales page I just wanna show you very quickly. Okay, so the one main thing you just wanna check is that when you click on the buy now button, that it goes to the next step. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So when they click on this, it's gonna to go to the checkout page. Are there any other buy now buttons? Let's double check, next step URL, perfect and good. So what you can really do is just really change around the pricing, change around the benefits, You know, uh, put a headline in there, a video. So this is really all about, how about get started as well? Is that a button? We can go to, so this one you'd wanna do uh, to the next URL. So we can do next URL right there. 
just like that. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you knew about all those, everything else, you know, you can play around with, like I said, aesthetics. If I did that, this video would probably be two or three hours because I am super OCD. Okay. So let's go back. All right. So now we can go to the order form. This is going to be where the magic happens. All right, and I like clicking on 30 on the bottom once again, just to kind of see more templates uh, as always at once. And it's really gonna be based upon which one you wanna pick. There is one specifically that I really like. That I, Let's see if I can find it really quickly, and it's this one. It actually looks like the Thrive Cart one. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but I'm gonna click on Select right here. All right, now here comes another very important part. This is gonna be where we add our digital product and of course the pricing. So if we scroll down right here, it says choose offer type. For this, we're obviously selling digital products. That's what the entire tutorial is gonna be about. So let's click on physical product. Just making sure you're paying attention. Digital product it is, okay? All right, and then under it, it says price plans and resources a customer can access after purchase. If we click on this, if you don't have anything there yet, that is completely fine. What we can do is click on the plus right here. Okay, so this is gonna be the digital product name. Okay, so that's gonna be the name. Make sure you put it right there. Then we have resources. Let's click on the plus right here. We wanna click on this drop down. So this can be for courses, course bundle, tags, or communities. Ideally, I just wanna do a tag for this. If you were doing like a membership or a course, you can definitely do courses here, but tags is gonna be beneficial because when they purchase, we can say that they're going to be a customer so that we know in our contacts who our customers are, and obviously they're gonna be very valuable to us, okay? So I'm gonna do tags right here, and for this, I'm just gonna do customer, okay? So if that's not in there, make sure you do one for buyer or customer, okay? Whatever it's going to be. Now what we wanna do is our pricing plan. So let's click on plus. And here you can do one-time payment, you can do subscription or payment plan. Ideally, if you're doing a digital product, most of the times it's gonna be a one-time payment, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, it also says choose an existing price plan, but if you haven't created any, not a problem at all, you can create a new one right here. All right, so this is gonna be the name displayed on the order form. This is gonna be the name of your product, what they're purchasing. This is gonna be the name on your dashboard. I like keeping it the same. This is gonna be the statement descriptor. So as it says right here, when a customer makes a purchase from you, a short description about that purchase will show up on the bag statement alongside the charge. Statement descriptors are limited to 22 characters, cannot use the special characters, and so on and so forth. So here, you wanna use something that when someone purchases it, it's either usually gonna be your name, it could be the product name or a really big brand, okay? So like Amazon would do Amazon, most likely, right? I'm not sure, maybe they do something different, but you just wanna make sure it's not something random where someone purchases, they go back and they see like, what's the zigzag method? Like, I don't know what that is. I didn't make that purchase, okay? So make sure that if your customer was to see this, they would say, oh yeah, I bought this from Marketing Island. Oh yeah, this was the Marketing Island method. So you could just do something like that. Like maybe if you have a big brand name, do that, or if they know your personal name, do that, okay? Don't spend too much time on it. Just don't make, just make sure that it's not something that someone would say, what is this? I don't remember, okay? Then we have a one-time payment, of course, as we talked about. And for this, what I wanna say is just going to be a dollar, okay? So in fact, what you can do, what I recommend doing is starting off at a dollar because if you wanna test it, from my knowledge, unless system has changed anything, I don't think they have recently. If you wanna make a test purchase, you have to actually buy it yourself, which isn't a big deal. It's just gonna go money in your PayPal. You can always refund it. So if you wanna do a test, do like a dollar. But if you already have a, say, a price for it, maybe it's gonna be 47, you know, keep it as that, okay? And then you wanna do save. All right, so if you ever need to do another pricing method, what you can do is create a new one and then have a different price. So let's say this one was $47. If you wanted to create a test, just do another one and make sure that it's a dollar so that you can actually go in and test it, okay? So let's click on save now. And perfect. So as you can see, we now have a digital product. We have the name of it. They're gonna get tagged as a customer. And of course, this is gonna be the specific pricing for it. It's gonna be a one-time payment of $47. So this is going to be attached to our actual checkout form. And before we view it, let's just edit it very quickly so we can talk about that. Okay, so based upon the actual checkout page that you pick, you may or may not wanna have some of the things on it. As an example, if I was selling a digital product, I don't personally need a um, 
phone number on there, you know, first name and last name and not so much, maybe email because you can obviously email them. This is going to be up to you, but this is the same idea that if someone has to enter a ton of different boxes with information, the chances are much lower that they're going to actually go through and pay you. You want to make the payment process as easy as possible. So for me personally, I would just have email. If you need to actually call them and follow up with them, then of course have their phone number, but that's just something to keep in mind. Okay. So this is going to naturally be in there because we fixed that previously. Uh, they can pick whether they want to pick with PayPal or use, say, Stripe. And anything else here is going to be business as usual, clicking on an image, changing it around, and so on and so forth. So not a whole lot you need to do here. You know, add in the price of it, the special, maybe some testimonials, the image, and you, my friend, are going to be good to go. That's a lot of the aesthetic stuff and the very easy to you know, replace it with what you already have. Make sure you click on Save Changes, and let's go back. All right, now let's move on to the thank you page. Okay, so once again, I'm going to do 30 at once so we can just see more of them. Ideally, you want to pick something that maybe looks aesthetically pleasing to you, something that's easy for you to edit. Once again, I'm just going to show you how to set it up and at least add your digital product to it. So I'm going to go with this one very quickly. And what I want to do is edit page. All right, so with the thank you page, there's one thing I want to make sure that you know how to do, and that's just upload your ebook and get the link for it so that people can download it. Like, thank you. Let's just say we're going to go right here, and I was going to edit this. Click here to download your ebook. All right, obviously, everything else is just kind of out of place and so on and so forth, which is fine, but we can go here and we can click on this link to a file. And what we can do is upload it right here. So I'm going to go to my computer and upload my ebook. All right, and there it is, the MIM PDF, so Marketing Island Method. I'm going to click on that and do Insert. And as you can see right here, this is going to be the link. What I recommend doing is just copying it, going to a notepad and pasting it in, which is what I'm going to do right now. There it is. So we're going to move that down there. And what we can do is I think that's going to be fine. Let's click on the Save button right here. What you can also do, if you want to make it look a little bit better, you can probably underline it, and I'd say just make it blue or a little bit more blue. So it looks like a link, like that's not the best blue in the world, but I'm just gonna do save changes. Let me open it up very quickly and let's click on it and just test. Like, does this actually open up our ebook? Perfect, it does. Okay, like I said, I just put together a one page thing. Probably open it in a new tab as well in case you wanna know how to do that. What we have right here, I'm just gonna highlight it again. We're gonna go to our link and right here, open in a new window. Perfect. That way, if you have anything else here you want them to see, it can open up in a new tab and they can still read this as needed. So that's going to be the thank you page. Pretty straightforward, right? Let's click up right here and go back and do the email automation now, which is pretty fun. All right. So now that we're on this page, what you want to do is hover over emails and go to campaigns. I'm just going to open it up in a new tab to make our life a little bit easier. All right, so this is going to be where they can automatically also get this sent to their email, okay? For some odd reason, maybe they paid and they X'd out, they at least get another opportunity to download it or go to the thank you page, okay? So let's click on create. All right, and so for this, I just called it the Marketing Island Method campaign, just to give you an idea so you know what this campaign is going to be all about, your specific digital product. You're going to choose your sender email address, and if you haven't done it yet, you just simply need to verify and authenticate your domain as well. If you go once again over to the settings over here and then go to emails, this is going to be where you can verify it, which they pretty much tell you how to do. You add it in here, you go to your email, you click on confirm, and it's going to be verified. With authenticating, it's probably going to take a little bit less than a day for it to do that but they give you the instructions right here and also if needed i can link you to two articles they explain it very quickly and easily and of course if you need support you can always reach out to them it takes them about 30 to 45 minutes to get back to me normally so they are very fast with that so in case you haven't done that that's something you need to do when it comes to sending emails going back here description is probably not really needed so let's just click on save all right so now that that has been saved what we want to do is click on the name right here that we just created all right, and once again, let's click on create. This is gonna be our email. All right, so we have our subject right here. Thank you for the purchase. And of course, the sender name is gonna be yours and your email. Okay, let's click on save. All right, and so what you wanna do is just give a straightforward and simple email. For this, you could say like, once again, thank you for the purchase. Click here in case you haven't gotten to download it and as well as getting a few free extra bonuses. Be sure to check out for my emails in the next couple of days because I have a few more great valuable bonuses for you as well. Thanks again, James. You know, something simple like that. Ideally, what I want you to get out of this is how to link. I don't know why I typed that when I didn't really need to. So click here to access your product. 
Okay, and remember, there's gonna be much more to this email, but if we go back over here, what we can do, this is gonna be the thank you page. Once we're clicked on it and it's highlighted, if we click on this right here, this is going to be what we can link to, okay? You can send them to the thank you page or you can give them straight to the ebook. For me personally, I like directing them to the thank you page just because if you have other bonuses on there or anything else, then that's where they can go, not only get their product, but maybe there's affiliate links, maybe there's webinars, maybe there's coaching calls. You have a good opportunity for them to maybe, you know, purchase something else from you, okay? So that would be the email. Obviously, there's gonna be much more. I'm just kind of going over it quickly so you know how to connect the dots. Most importantly, what you wanna do here is save and publish. Okay, and this is gonna be pretty basic. You wanna do it immediately, so zero is going to be there. No delay whatsoever. Once they opt in or purchase, that means that they can actually get it very quickly and click on activate. All right, perfect. And if you click on the actual name of the campaign, you're going to see that the status is on. If you ever wanted to add more emails after it, you just simply do create. And then for the delay, you would do maybe one day after or two days after, and then you can keep repeating the process. But as long as you know how to set up an email as it is right now, you're going to be good to go. If you do have any more questions about creating a deeper email marketing campaign, I do have a tutorial about that as well. Just let me know in the comments. So we're pretty much now almost done. There's going to be one more step. Okay, let's go back to our sales funnel and what we want to do is go to our order form right here and what I want to do is also reload or refresh the page because we just created that email campaign and I want system to know that we did that remember we were doing it in this tab but not this one so it might not have been refreshed yet okay now that we are on our order form what we want to do is click on automation rules this is the last step let's click on add rule and so there's going to be a trigger that happens so when we click on plus right here Anytime someone makes a new sale, this is what we want. So let's do new sale. And as you can see right here, it's gonna be in the funnel that we created and it's gonna be on the order form. That's exactly what we want. So anytime a sale is made on the order form, what's going to happen? Let's click on plus. We want them to subscribe to a campaign. Okay, let's do choose campaign. And I just have this one right here, the one that you created just recently, that's gonna be the one that you connected to. And when you are done, click on save rule. Okay, and as you can see, if you reload it, it's going to still be there when you go over to the automation rules. And you, my friend, are set up when it comes to selling digital products on system.io. Let's take a quick look at the funnel. I'm kind of just gonna walk you through from the top. So like I said, a lot of this is plug and play where you can change it and edit it around. They go through, they like what they see, and of course, if they wanna buy now, they click on the buy now button immediately they get taken to the checkout page where they can obviously enter their email address, they can do credit card or debit card, or they can do PayPal, however it is, then of course they can click on enroll. And once they are done, what happens is they purchase, you get paid, they get sent that email in the background, then of course they get taken to the thank you page, which is gonna be this one. And let me open this one more time. And then they are going to arrive right here where they can download their ebook. Obviously, you're going to want to change this around. But like I said, these are all the pieces to the puzzle that you need when it comes to selling digital products. You just got to go in, obviously, make it look a little bit better, you know, change the headlines, uh, the fonts, the colors, you know, to your brand to match it, whatever it is. You could even change your templates, you know, use a different one. But but nevertheless, you are equipped to sell digital products using system.io, and I hope that this tutorial really helped you out. I do wanna remind you at the end that you can always make that test purchase, and if you wanna do that, probably just put it as a dollar. You can even just refund it if needed, but just a little tip that if you wanna test it out, you just gotta pay it and go through it yourself so you can always lower the price. And that's ultimately going to conclude this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And of course, if you haven't gotten the test out system.io, you can click the link in the description to do so. They come with the ability to use them for free. And of course, if you want to upgrade and get plenty more great features, you can do that as well. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching all of this tutorial, and I'll see you in my next video.